Good morning and welcome to the breakfast news on Rajya Sabha TV. I am Ashwarya Kapoor. Let us begin with the headlines. Prime Minister Narendra Modi saw strong reprimand for Subramaniam Swami says leaders should not think they are above the system. U.S. backs India's entry into MTCR says it would strengthen international non-proliferation. Heavy rain slash parts of Uttarakhand and Himachal Pradesh pre-monsoon showers in Delhi bring much-needed relief. Crunch three-day summit to discuss Brexit begins today. British Prime Minister David Cameron will address EU leaders to explain to them political fallout of the decision. And Iceland stuns England in the Euro Championship, scores a 2-1 victory to book a quarter-final place against France. Barely days after India's entry into the elite NSG group was blocked by China, Prime Minister Narendra Modi has exuded confidence that the country will get a membership of the bloc and the process for it has begun on a positive note. He also disapproved of party MP Subramanian Swami's attacks on RBI Governor Raghuram Rajan and some top finance ministry officials saying that they are inappropriate. Now calling Rajan no less a patriotic, Modi virtually ticked off Swami saying that if anybody considers himself above the system, then it is wrong. Now, speaking also on the Indo-Pak relations, Modi said that India will have to be alert and conscious with the time with its neighbour. He stressed that the world was now convinced about India's views on terrorism emanating from across the border. Modi also denied the allegations of a political witch hunt in the Augusta Westland chopper deal, saying that the investigating agencies are doing a professional job. He also maintained that the people behind this are very experienced and have perfectly practiced the art of doing wrong deeds. The Prime Minister claimed that such a thing would not have been done without a big protective shield. Well, uh, the Prime Minister's reprimand for Subramaniam Swami has come as a big relief for the BJP leaders. Now, party leaders who were unsure of uh, speaking about Swami without receiving clear instruction from the top leadership agreed that the Rajya Sabha MP should not miss the unambiguous signals. The party had already sent out a strong signal to Swami, you now cancelling two functions where he was supposed to speak. BJP leaders now hope that the Prime Minister's message that anyone who thinks uh, that he is bigger than the system is wrong will put a check on Swami's uh, daily attacks on the government. Subramaniam Swami has not only openly attacked the government's top officials, but has also uh, attacked Finance Minister Arun Jaitley, saying that they were his personal views. And weather update, well, parts of Himachal Pradesh and Uttarakhand received a heavy rainfall on Monday as the southwest monsoon intensified in the hilly state. The Med Department has predicted heavy to very heavy rains at isolated places over Goa and coastal Andhra Pradesh as well. Meanwhile, moderate to heavy rains were also recorded in parts of Uttar Pradesh. Heavy rains lashed parts of Himachal Pradesh on Monday as monsoon remained active in the lower hilly areas of the state. The Med Department has warned of heavy rains in some places till July and rains and thunder showers at some places in the lower, mid and higher hills over the next six days, up to July 3rd. In Himachal Pradesh, in the last 24 hours, there was a lot of rain in the last 24 hours. In the district of Mandi and the district of Sirmao, there was a lot of rain in the last 24 hours. In the next 4-5 days, the weather will be bad. It can be bad for a lot of rain. It can be bad for a lot of rain. The rain will be bad for a lot of rain. The rain will be bad for a lot of low hills. The rain will be bad for a lot of rain. Meanwhile, just 24 hours of rain has led to water logging in Katak with life in many low-lying areas coming to a grinding halt. The city has received around 181 millimetres of rainfall in the past 24 hours and prediction of more rains over the next 48 hours paints a very dreary picture. 
The Med Department has forecast heavy rainfall in Telangana, Andhra Pradesh and Karnataka too for the next few days. Moderate to heavy rains were recorded in parts of Uttar Pradesh where major rivers are in spate. Reports state that Ganga is rising in Fatehgarh, Kannauj, Kanpur and Mirzapur while the Yamuna is rising in Mohuna and Banda. Heavy rain was recorded in some parts of the national capital late in the night. While the weather in Delhi has remained warm and humid over the past couple of days, the Med Department said that Delhi will get rains by July 1st and the rainfall will increase throughout the month. Bureau report, Raja Sabha TV. On to some other news, well, a day after India signed the Missile Technology Control Regime or the MTCR, the United States has backed India's entry and said that it would strengthen international non-proliferation. The U.S. asserted that India has demonstrated a sustained commitment uh, to non-proliferation and has an effective export control system that puts into effect the MTCR guidelines and procedures. All the 34 current members, including the U.S., agreed that India met the standard and its presence in the MTCR would strengthen international non-proliferation. The MTCR is an informal and voluntary association of countries that uh, seeks to reduce the global missile proliferation threat primarily by controlling exports of rockets and unmanned aerial vehicle systems capable of delivering weapons of mass destruction and related equipment and technology. Meanwhile, in a new turn into India's NSG bid, China on Monday said that it is ready to continue discussions on new entrants to the nuclear suppliers group, but is unaware of a facilitator being appointed to look into India's application to join the elite club. Now, China denied any knowledge of a panel headed uh, by Rafael Grossi, an Argentinian diplomat, uh, which had been uh, formed to hold informal consultations on India's membership. Further, China asserted that it uh, was not just uh, them, but other member nations as well, which blocked India's entry into the NSG. Now, China also added that it had been uh, doing uh, the groundwork for the entry of non-NPT countries into NSG, China's remarks came a day after Ministry of External Affairs hinted that China's sternness could hurt bilateral ties. India and Pakistan, who applied for the membership of the 48-member NSG, have not signed the NPT or the Non-Proliferation Treaty, which China insists is a must for joining the group. And Pakistan will decide whether or not to allow Indian investigators to visit the country to probe the Pathan court terror attack only after Eid. Well, a high-level meeting to be attended by top civil and military officials will be convened by Pakistan's Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif to discuss India's request for the visit. The meet would also decide on uh, talks over issues related to bilateral dialogue between the two neighbours. Now, a five-member joint investigation team from Pakistan member had visited India between 27 to 31st of March to collect evidence with regard to the attack. In return, India has requested Pakistan to allow its investigators to visit the country to question alleged masterminds of the attack, including JEM chief Maulana Masood Azhar and his brother. Moving on in the bulletin now, well, the global market uncertainty has once again made gold a safe haven asset. Now, experts feel that prices are likely to remain firm and on course to touch 33,500 rupees by the end of this year. Here is a report. Fueled by the market mayhem after Brexit, gold is once again flying off the shelves. On Friday itself, after the results of the UK referendum, prices of the yellow metal rose by 8.2% to touch $1,319 an ounce. This year, prices jumped 6% making gold the best performing commodity. Experts feel that the impending US elections, geopolitical tensions and volatility in the currency markets could only add to gold's glitter further. Now it is the US election which are coming along. Then there is a terrorism. Then there is a war which is going on in uh, different places in the Middle East. So there are too many geopolitical activities which are happening. Now, an investor who is uh, got his hard-earned money, he becomes susceptible. Demand for gold is likely to rise as much as 10% this year. Two-thirds of this demand comes from villages, where jewellery is an investment. Although rural demand has stumbled after two back-to-back -back droughts, the projected surplus rainfall is expected to boost gold prices. Gold is preferred every 
where because liquidity is very fast you can encash it within five minutes five two percent three percent here or there and you don't need very, uh, somebody very expert to advise you what is the price you're going to get you everything is very clear to the consumer gold has also gained because commodities overall have crumbled due to oversupply and the chinese slowdown and now gold is being seen as a strong hedge against global economic uncertainty. Financial year 2014-15 threw up several surprises for the investors. Assets like real estate and gold, long considered defensive bets, floundered. Prices of gold tumbled to 25,610 rupees. While real estate continues to be in doldrums, but gold seems to be glittering. Reporting from Delhi, with camera person Prem, I'm Kriti Mishra for Rajya Sabha Television. News from Punjab and the Congress is once again facing heat in the state over the appointment of its election in charge. Well, days after Kamal Nath resigned from the post for his alleged role in the 1984 riots, the appointment of Asha Kumari has split further controversy for the party. A day after the Congress appointed Asha Kumari as its Punjab election in charge, the opposition has united in criticizing the decision. The Aadmi Party joined the BJP and the Shiromani Akali Dal in accusing the party of not having a single clean politician. They say that by appointing a tainted leader, the party is not serious about tackling corruption. Congress ke paas koi aisa leader nahi hai jo dagi na ho. इससे साबित होता है कि कांग्रेस पार्टी पंजाब में जो बुरी स्थिति है भ्रष्टाचार की उससे लड़ने के लिए बिल्कुल गंभीर नहीं है कांग्रेस के पास कोई व्यक्ति नहीं है और इससे कांग्रेस का दिवालियापन जाहिर होता है कांग्रेस कैसे लोगों की पार्टी हो गई है उन्होंने पहले बनाया कमलनाथ पर जिन पे चौरासी के दंगा का मामला था अभी बनाया आशा कुमारी को जो खुद तीन साल के कैद का मामला है जेल का सजा हुई है इसलिए पंजाब में कांग्रेस पहले से ही जा चुकी है कांग्रेस ने हमेशा पंजाब को तबाह करने की बात करी है कांग्रेस ने 1980 के दशक में जो आतंकवाद आया उसकी उसकी जन्मदाता कांग्रेस थी उन्नीस के दंगों की जन्मदाता कांग्रेस थी चौरासी का बत्तीस साल इंसाफ न मिलने की जन्मदाता कांग्रेस है मैं समझता हूं कांग्रेस ने हमेशा एंटी सिक्स स्टैंड रखा है और पंजाब के खिलाफ पंजाबियों के खिलाफ स्टैंड रखा है कुमारी इज एन एमएलए फ्रॉम हिमाचल प्रदेश शी इज करेंटली ऑन बेल इन अ लैंड ग्रैप केस आफ्टर बीइंग सेंटेंस टू वन ईयर इन जेल इन फेब्रवरी कांग्रेस लीडर्स आर हवेवर बैकिंग हर अपॉइंटमेंट ये इंटरनल मामला है कांग्रेस का नंबर दो ये प्रेगोरेटिव है कांग्रेस अध्यक्ष का कि वो किसको किसी सूबे में इंचार्ज बनाना चाहती हैं तो इस सूबे में उन्होंने आशा कुमारी जी को इंचार्ज बनाया नॉन इशू का कोई इशू थोड़ी बनता है ये कोई इशू थोड़ी है इशू ये है कि पंजाब में कांग्रेस को हम कैसे सत्ता में लाएंगे इशू ये है कि भारतीय जनता पार्टी को हमारे इंटरनल वर्किंग से क्या लेना देना है नथिंग इट वी आर वी आर वेरी मच गियर्ड अप टू फॉर्म द गवर्नमेंट इन पंजाब एंड बीजेपी स्केड डर रही है और कहीं कहीं के बिना बिना जो जिसका कोई सिर पैर नहीं है जिस बात का उसको वो इशू बनाना चाहते हैं द कांग्रेस हाई कमांड सेटल्ड ऑन कुमारी आफ्टर कमलनाथ स्टेप डाउन एज पंजाब इन चार्ज फॉलोइंग एन अप्रोर ओवर हिज अलेज रोल इन दाइनटीन एटी फोर एंटी सिक राइट मीन वाइल कुमारी मेट कांग्रेस प्रेसिडेंट सोनिया गांधी ऑन मंडे अमिट इंडिकेशन दैट शी विल बी अलाउड टू स्टे ऑन इन द पोस्ट ब्यूरो रिपोर्ट राज्यसभा टीवी News from Uttar Pradesh now and Chief Minister Akhilesh Yadav expanded his cabinet on Monday, most probably the last expansion before the state goes to polls next year. Well, as the Governor Ram Naik administered the oath to the new ministers, all eyes were on Balram Yadav, who made a comeback days after he was being kicked out of the cabinet. Uttar Pradesh Chief Minister Akhilesh Yadav expanded his cabinet on Monday for the seventh time. Governor Ram Naik administered the oath of office to Balram Yadav along with three new faces. This is a dramatic comeback for Balram Yadav who was dropped last week for facilitating the merger of Mukhtar Amsari's Qaumi Ekta Dal with the ruling Samajwadi Party. Previously ousted leader Narad Rai was administered oath as cabinet minister while Ravidas Mehrotra and Sharda Pratap Shukla were inducted as ministers of state with independent charge. Ziauddin Rizvi has also been given a cabinet berth but could not take oath since he was out of town. Senior Minister Shivpal Singh Yadav's absence at the oath taking ceremony raised several questions. 
However, the party sought to downplay reports of a rift within the party. हमारे समाजवादी परिवार के एक वरिष्ठ और अपरिहार्य अंग हैं और सुपाल जी का पूर्व नियोजित कार्यक्रम था मैं भी अकस्मात आ गया अन्यथा मेरा भी यहाँ आने का कोई कार्यक्रम पूर्व निर्धारित नहीं था The Akhilesh Ministry now has a total of 60 members comprising 26 cabinet ministers, 12 ministers of state with independent charge and 22 ministers of state. The last expansion of his cabinet had taken place in October last year and this is likely to be the last one before the state heads into polls in 2017. Bureau report Rajya Sabha TV. And in breakfast news we'll take a very short break up next we have all the international and sports news stay with us. Sainal Nehwal, the first Indian to win a medal in badminton at the Olympics. The world number two ranked player is also the first Indian to win the World Junior Badminton Championships and the first Indian to win a Super Series tournament. Sainal Nehwal, in fact, completed a hat-trick Super Series titles in 2010. That same year, she became the first Indian singles player to reach the final of the year-ending Super Series finals, defeating two-time All England champion and former world number one Tina Bowne in the semis. I am Shan Russell. I'm Tracy Shilchi and you're watching News Tonight. Together with the team of our dedicated professionals from across various fields. This is Sham Sundar, Vishal Dahiya, Akhilesh Suman, Frank Pereira from Beijing, China. Priti Mishra for Rajya Sabha Television. We bring to you the news that matters here on Rajya Sabha TV. Welcome back. Well, days after Britain's historic referendum on leaving the EU, there is still no clarity on how to begin the procedure. Now, fearful of a prolonged period of political and economic uncertainty, European leaders are eager for the UK to make a swift start on extricating itself from the bloc, but the country is reluctant. Now, a crunch of three-day summit in Brussels begins today to contain the fallout of Brexit. Britain continues to face an uncertain future after the historic vote to leave the EU. The divorce is already looking messy, with Prime Minister David Cameron and key EU leaders in disagreement on how to even begin. The European Union insisted on Monday that it will not hold informal talks with the UK until it triggers Article 50 of the Lisbon Treaty. This came after German Chancellor Angela Merkel held talks with French President François Hollande and Italian Prime Minister Matteo Renzi. According to Article 50, a member state that wishes to leave the European Union has to notify the Council. But British Prime Minister David Cameron made it clear in Parliament that London was reluctant to launch formal exit proceedings yet. I've spoken to Chancellor Merkel, President Hollande and a number of other European leaders. We've discussed the need to prepare for the negotiations and in particular the fact that the British government will not be triggering Article 50 at this stage. Before we do that, we need to determine the kind of relationship we want with the EU. And that is rightly something for the next Prime Minister and their Cabinet to decide. Also, I befasse mich mit den Realitäten und die heißt, dass uh, eine Mehrzahl der Bewohnerinnen und Bürgerinnen und Bürger Großbritanniens sich für uh, den Austritt aus der Europäischen Union um, entschlossen hat. Und uh, deshalb erwarte ich auch uh, zu einem bestimmten Zeitpunkt die Mitteilung nach Artikel 50. Why ne pas perdre de temps? Parce que rien n'est pire que l'incertitude. L'incertitude, elle génère des comportements politiques, souvent irrationnels. Opposition Labour Party leader Jeremy Corbyn, who backed Britain remaining in the EU, has insisted stalling the announcement would leave Britain in a state of paralysis. But Corbyn faces political paralysis of his own after 19 of his party MPs resigned from senior posts in an act of no confidence. Don't let those people who wish us ill divide us. Stay together, strong and united. Meanwhile, amid uncertainty, markets continue to see a downward trend with billions more dollars being wiped off the value of shares in Europe and on Wall Street. UK finance minister tried to calm markets on Sunday, saying that the country was ready to face the future from a position of strength. It will not be plain sailing in the days ahead. 
But let me be clear, you should not underestimate our resolve. We were prepared for the unexpected and we are equipped for whatever happens. And we are determined that unlike eight years ago, Britain's financial system will help our country deal with any shocks. All eyes are now on the Brussels summit today, where British Prime Minister David Cameron will brief the other EU leaders, explaining to them the political fallout of Brexit vote. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. Let's get you some more international news now in the World Wrap. The Pakistan People's Party has filed a petition with the Election Commission demanding that Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif and four of his relatives be disqualified for not disclosing their wealth. The petition says that they were not eligible for membership of parliament as they were involved in corruption and hence not honest as required under Articles 62 and 63 of the Constitution. The application said that Sharif failed to reveal the complete assets of his family members. Two people were killed and two injured in a shooting in a rural part of Oregon in the United States. The suspected gunman was captured by the state police, but the reason behind the shooting is still being probed. The victims were transported to the area hospitals. Seventeen Colombian soldiers have died in a helicopter crash in the Andes. The MI-17 helicopter, which was travelling to a military base, came down 110 miles northeast of Bogota. A military spokesperson said that poor weather was the reason behind the crash. Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan has apologized for the downing of a Russian military jet on the Turkey-Syria border. The Kremlin has said the Russian jet was shot down while it took part in a Russian military campaign in Syria. Erdogan expressed his sympathy and deepest condolences to the family of the Kale pilot and asked to be forgiven. The damaged flight data recorder from an Egypt airplane that crashed has been successfully repaired by the France. By France, now flight MS-804 from Paris to Cairo crashed into the Mediterranean Sea on 19th of May, killing all 66 people on board. Now on to some Euro Cup action. Well, England suffered their worst humiliation since they were knocked out of the 19. Uh, 50 World Cup by the US as Iceland shocked them in the last 16 on Monday. While Italy produced a tactically superior display to end Spain's quest for a third consecutive European Championship title. Here are all the details. Wait, Rooney, corner, goal. Iceland pulled off one of the biggest shocks in European Championship history, beating England 2-1 in the round of 16 on Monday, continuing the astonishing run of the smallest nation at the tournament. After falling behind to a fourth-minute Wayne Rooney penalty, they levelled almost immediately through Ranyar Sigurdsson and struck again in the 18th with a shot by Colbyn Sigtorsson. The Icelanders defended superbly in the second half to earn the biggest victory in their history and a quarter-final match against France on 4th July. For Roy Hodgson, it was a desperate and shameful way to end his four years as England manager when he stepped down on Monday night. Meanwhile, in another match, Italy broke a 22-year jinx to end Spain's bid for a record third successive European title with a deserved 2-0 win. And it takes, the hair pushes it out. And in, the end, the goal is... in another battle between a couple of powerhouses in European football. Kalini scored the game's opening goal, bundling home from close range after David De Gea had parried an Edith free kick in greasy conditions in the first half. Just getting there ahead of Gerard Piquet, the defender, thinking and acting like a striker. An injury time goal by striker Graziano sealed victory for the Italians, who had not won a competitive match against Spain since the 1994 World Cup and were humiliated 4 0 by their old rivals in the Euro 2012 final. In stoppage time. They will now play Germany in the quarter-final clash on Saturday. Bureau report, Rajiv Sabha TV. He's done a real number on Spain, and the winners of the last two tournaments have been knocked out.
And from uh, football to tennis, well, a defending champion Novak Djokovic and former champions Roger Federer, Venus Williams, along with current French Open champion uh, Garbine Muguruza, all advanced to the second round of the Wimbledon Championships on Monday. Now, one number one, Djokovic got his uh, campaign for a third successive uh, Wimbledon title off uh, to a winning start with a 6-0, 7-6, victory over Britain's James Ward. And the 29-year-old Serb is on target for a second, uh, for a record books. A fourth Wimbledon title would uh, make him just the second man since Don Budge in 1938 to win five straight majors. Meanwhile, in another match, Roger Federer began his uh, 18th consecutive Wimbledon challenge with a straight set 7-6, 7-6, 3 win over Argentina's uh, Guido Pella. The third seed, bidding for an eighth Wimbledon title at the age of 34, struggled to shake off a gutsy opponent before his class prevailed. He next plays the world number 70, 772, Marcus Willis of Bruton. And in the women's draw, French Open champion Garbine Muguruza provided an early show of grit on day one as she faced a tough test against Italy's Camilla Giorgi before progressing 6-2, 5-7, 6-4. Meanwhile, the world number two is uh, in the same half of the draw as uh, five-time champion Venus Williams, who equaled Amy Frazier's record of appearing in 71 Grand Slams as she overcame uh, Croatia's uh, Donna Vekic, 7-6, 6-4. That's all in this edition of News. Thanks for watching.